going everybody uh it is one cold day in houston to follow up with my other video um jim acosta um the president came out to do a press conference the day after the midterm elections like uh most presidents usually do um and uh, even uh, before that, uh, the president talked about wanting to calm things down. I uh, believe Nancy Pelosi also made a statement um, speaking on that matter. But the media is not going to that fly, you know, hostilities between the media and the president, even though they complain about it, I, I believe it's their bread and butter. I believe they've had tremendous ratings increase due to the fact, and I don't think they want things to be civil at all. Um, they're just making they, they're, they're getting too much uh, their ratings are just uh, too high to uh, to turn away from it you know uh, and uh, which is I guess okay I mean I don't really uh, CNN's gonna do what CNN does MSNBC is going to do what they do. Fox is going to do what they do. Um, it just is what it is. Um, they're, a, they're a corporation. They have shareholders to answer to. They have a board to answer to. Um, their job is to make money. And... Uh, and that's where uh, people uh, need to realize that the people watching the news, you, you are not the consumer like it used to be. You, you are not the consumer. You are the product. And they uh, getting you to tune in so that they can sell their commercial time for more money to um, make dividends better for their shareholders. That is the game plan. So we as the people are, should understand that we no longer are the consumer, we are the product. Um, essentially being sold. Um, but that's okay. Uh, but what Jim Acosta, you know, when he had that, when they, when the president came out for that uh, press conference, right away, you could tell by his, uh, his, just his language, when he stood up, he didn't start with a question, you know, you should, you're supposed to ask a question, get an answer, a follow-up question usually, um, and get another answer. I mean, if he wants to, if, if he feels like the uh, the caravan is not an invasion, that's fine. That's his opinion. The president does see it as an invasion. Again, that's fine. That's his opinion. Um, and we all have our own opinions. But that's just what they are, opinions. To get up there and the first thing out of his mouth is, I want to challenge you on an opinion? You're going to challenge the President of the United States on an opinion? In my, in my opinion, what he should have done, what he's supposed to do, is stand up and ask the question, why, Mr. President, do you see the caravan as an invasion? 
and let the president answer. That is, that is uh, the way it should have been done. I mean, he's a reporter. I believe his problem, like a few others, not the majority, but a few others, they want to be the story. They don't want to report the story. They want to be the story. And there's no better example than Jim Acosta. He thinks he's still doing his op-ed, which he needs to get out of that mindset because he's not doing an opinion be an opinion piece anymore. He's the White House correspondent the chief White House correspondent for CNN. He's not doing an an opinion editorial for CNN, but that's the way he treats it. Nobody cares what you think. Nobody cares what any of them up there think. If we cared what Jim Acosta thought, he would have an opinion show like Sean Hannity or Tucker Carlson, you know, those are opinion shows. Those are, it's not like Brett Baer, where it's the news, the nightly news, or Lester Holt, where it's the nightly news. No. But he proceeded to get up there and speak his opinion and challenge the president on his opinion, telling him his opinion was wrong. It's an opinion, for, for one. It's just an opinion. His opinion can't be any more wrong than Jim Acosta's opinion, or my opinion, or your opinion. And they know this. But like I said, Jim Acosta wants to be the story. He doesn't want to report the story. He wants to be the story. Which is unfortunate, I believe, because this is why they get the term, the name, uh, fake news. Because it's not news, for one. When they do stuff like that, it's not news. It's opinion. But to go on and continue... The way he did was, first of all, rude to the president. It was rude to the White House correspondent organization, and it was rude to his fellow journalists, in my opinion. And, uh... I wa- I was watching it um, when the you know when the president tells you gives him as, first of all gives him as much time as he gave him and then tells you you're done and tries to move on to the next reporter you shut your mouth and you sit down but again Jim Acosta wants it to be about him so he keeps pushing. And then when that young lady who you could see was, uh, I feel bad that she got wrapped up in it, but I mean, she's just trying to do her job. Her job is to take the mic and give it to the next person. Take the mic and give it to the next person. And she reached for it twice because the president told him he was done. And then the third time she went for it, she actually got a hold of it and he did some little judo chop on her elbow or her, you know, inside of her arm, which was, in my opinion, um, what he did was not really that bad or would not have been that bad, but the fact that it all happened so fast, maybe there was just a little bit too much, uh, Force applied. Not saying that there was a lot, but more than he meant, I believe, you know. I don't think he meant to do it as quickly and as 
um, or apply as uh, as much force as he as he did, which again wasn't a lot, but I think it was more than he intended. So, but still, you made yourself look like an ass. You proved the president's point when he starts calling you out and telling you how rude you are, you know, you can't deny it because you just made yourself look like an ass by trying to make the story about you and, I mean, uh, I, uh, I support the... New text message from mom. I support the, uh, the decision to, uh, put him in the deep freeze for a little while. Um, but he's always doing this. He is always pulling these kinds of stunts. Um, I mean, I know they have a White House correspondence organization where if you do something to one reporter, the rest of them will kind of do it like a strike. And per personally, I wouldn't let Jim Acosta back in ever, just not for this one incident, but this incident, in my opinion, is the straw that broke the camel's back. I would just flat out tell CNN, you want, you know, if you want to have a chief court or White House correspondence in here, pick somebody else. Otherwise, you're going to be left out. And I guarantee you, the rest of them might strike for a little bit, but they'll get over it and come back because they have no choice. That's where the president's at. If they want to cover the president, that's where they'll go. And if they don't, that's their choice, you know? <laughs> if they want to all strike for the next two years or potentially six years over Jim Acosta, let it be their choice, you know? But uh, uh, I would uh, I'd be like, you are no longer welcome here uh, because you're an ass. Not because I, not because I think this, this, this. Just because you're an ass, and you continue to prove that you're an ass. So I would, uh, I just don't, uh, you know, if that was, uh, I know people say this a lot, but if it was on the other side, you know, the left would have freaked out if Trump would have done that to a liberal person or woman because uh, you saw it with uh, during the Kavanaugh hearings uh, Senator Hatchett from uh, Ohio no, not Ohio um, Utah you know they were uh, he was confronted by some protesters and they were uh, screaming something about Kavanaugh, and that could be, uh, I don't remember exactly what they were saying, but he said, um, I don't have to listen, uh, I think, I don't have to listen to you or something to that effect, but he said, when you grow up, then, I can, then I'll listen to you. And you heard all the women screaming at him like, how dare you? How dare you speak to a woman like that? So if what Senator Hatch has said was so bad, how is this not so bad? He actually put his hands on a woman who is just trying to do her job. She's just a, a 20 year old intern or however old and for him to act that way, you don't hear anybody, they're all defending him. He was on Anderson Cooper 360 saying, I, I, I don't, it's unfortunate the White House would say this because I obviously did not touch the woman the way they are saying it. You shouldn't have touched her at all. You should have just gave up the mic after you did your little grandstanding and set your butt back down because if that was me I'd have got I'd have got all into you I would have 
called you out right then and there. And probably wouldn't have had you removed right then and there because you don't want to make the guy up the martyr. But as you know, if he had pushed it too far, that's what they would have done. They would have made Jim Costa look like a martyr and President Trump's just this big bad guy. And you know, I know Trump doesn't really have a lot of room to talk when it comes to because he said things and done things. But as my mother always told me, two wrongs don't make a right. You know, just because one person does something doesn't mean you get to get away with doing something too. You fucked up, own it, and quit crying about it. I mean, at, at the very least, apologize. Just say, yeah, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I'll take my two days or whatever in the freeze and then move on. But no, but to continue to play like now Jim Acosta's the victim is ridiculous. So, and like I said in the beginning, it's not going to change because this type of stuff gets them great ratings or improved ratings from uh, pre-Trump presidency. And like I said, we are the product. They have board members, shareholders, who are they, they are beholden to, to turn a profit. And this is turning a profit for them. So don't, don't uh, expect it to end anytime soon. Because they will, they know this is their only way. They can't just suddenly turn and start reporting news like Fox News does. Fox News, their ratings are just astronomical compared to everybody else because everybody turns to them for real news. And uh, I used to be a CNN watcher. I used to watch nothing, but I didn't even know what, who, you know, Fox News, I didn't know anything about Fox News until Juan Williams went there. And that's, those of you that watched my, my uh, walkaway story know that that's why I went from CNN to Fox News was because I followed Juan Williams in his NPR days. And then when he left NPR and went to Fox News, I followed him from NPR to Fox and then I really saw a big difference in the reporting and never went back to CNN. Um, but that is, uh, I just, that, it's unfortunate the way it played out. I hope the young girl is uh, all right. I'm sure she's all right. Um, but Tim Acosta, you're an idiot. And... Uh, Don't expect it to stop anytime soon. That's all I'm saying because it is what it is. So uh, that's my uh, little spiel on uh, Jim Acosta. Oh, and uh, while we're on the subject of reporters, this uh, Antifa group that went to Tucker Carlson's house, first of all, I think you're cowards choosing a date and time that you knew he wasn't going to be there. You knew he was going to be preparing to go on air. So you knew he wasn't at his house. You did that just to intimidate his family and make a statement, a bad one at that. Um, trying to break down their door. See, this is what I don't get. What is after after Republicans lost the House, you don't see anybody catching cars on fire, protesting in the streets, busting things up, harassing people, intimidating people, causing property damage. 
You don't see none of that. They get up and they go to work. But yet, they are the fascists. This is why so many of us have walked away from the Democratic Party. Because of cowardly acts like this group that showed up at Tucker's house. Tucker is an opinion, has an opinion show. The things he debates, he debates from his own personal perspective. If you don't like his opinion, that's fine. But why would you go and, and try to intimidate his family? Trying to shut down freedom of speech is fascist. You are the fascist. I am all about a lot of the liberal ideas. But you go so far in trying to force things down everybody else's throat and then calling them racist and bigots and fascist when they simply don't agree with you is why so many of us have walked away from the left because we just can't be a part of that. It's one thing to have different ideas. It's another thing to do what you're doing. This is, is it's un-American. Freedom of speech is a cornerstone of our society. And even the media, you see them trying to justify violence saying, well, because they're fascists, it's okay. They're fighting fascism. It's okay. Even if that were true, no, it's not okay. You don't get to resort to violence just because you don't like somebody's point of view or like somebody's idea. And having a different idea is not fascist. Acting the way you're acting is fascist. It's... Uh, it's crazy, it's dangerous, and it's exactly why so many of us have left and you haven't learned a damn thing. But that's okay, keep doing what you're doing because I'm sure that's, uh, I'm sure it's a winning platform, you know? If, uh, if you like the video, please mash that thumbs up button. Um, like, subscribe, follow me on Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram. Um, all that will be in the end of the video in the, in the description. So uh, uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.